I am Linda from Tilburg for Biz News, and joining us today is Francois Rousseau, the CEO of the Southern African Agricultural Initiative, also known as SAI. Well, this organization is leveraging the power of artificial intelligence, or AI, to support family farmers across Southern Africa. And they've recently launched an AI platform called AI Farmer, which is designed to provide farmers with comprehensive answers within just minutes. And we have Francois in the studio again with us. Hi, Francois. Welcome to Bay. Hi, Linda. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, can you tell us more about this AI platform that you have to advise farmers? Yes, I think, you know, um, we started uh, looking into this technology and actually using it right away after we had this large transformation in, in uh, large language models called transformers. And uh, we knew that uh, this technology and especially generative AI will have a lot of applications in agriculture. And especially our main focus was with regards to agricultural extension services. Now, agricultural extension programs are all about bringing uh, the latest scientific discoveries and farming technologies directly to farmers. Um, and the goal here is to boost uh, efficiency and uh, sustainable uh, to help farms operate sustainably, which not only increases profit, uh, but also strengthens food security and farmers' lives. And for this, you need good agricultural information to keep up to date with the latest uh, technology trends and research. And um, we just know, and it's it's not just here in Africa, it's throughout the world, even you know, in, in developed countries, they just do not have the institutional capacity to drive agricultural extension services. You know, and if we just look at um, the scale we agricultural um, the scale of what agricultural extension services can bring to farmers, you know, um, they can aid some 570 million smallholders who cultivate about 24 percent of the world's agricultural land. So this is an extremely important function uh, that we need to bring back and that we need to scale to assist farmers. So. Um, with this technology, we knew that um, we could help these farmers, especially with the large amounts of information. We're talking about uh, the latest legislation, uh, regulations issued by governments. Is it product information, you know, like products or like pesticides? Is it like tr access to tractor manuals, um, you know, and then also recommendations and analytics. and. All of this is now available to farmers 24-7, seven, seven days a week, and it can be the best expert um, uh, in its, in its uh, category. So that's, that's where we started with it. And initially, we had a WhatsApp layer over ChatGPT, mm -hmm. and we just realized, you know, there were so many pitfalls, mm -hmm. and um, we've learned a lot uh, uh, from there. Uh, you know, just the fact that information is too generic we never know where the where the, um, uh, the documents or where the educational content is coming from, and we soon realized that you know a farmer in Canada cannot use the same information as a farmer in in South Africa, and the same for the different provinces as well. So we started training the AI on different information, you know, high school agricultural papers, research documents, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then we built it out to about 13,000 subcategories of agricultural information. And in this case, specifically South African agricultural information. And, um, yes, we've just actually been seeing and tweaking, um, uh, this model. You know, I think there's a couple of things that make this, uh, this agricultural extension services model different, but also the technology that it is based on. We have partnered with a local company called uh, Vectormine. They're South African based, uh, and all of the programmers are from South Africa as well. But what makes this so different is it, you've got your own document management platform, and that means that you, as the user or organization, control the flow of information. It doesn't break out and go into ChatGPT or Claude or all of these other um, large language models. And that means complete traceability and complete traceability. Um, together with this whole AI ethical framework that we've built means that we can see um, how the, the system answers, why it answers, what it answers, and then go and fix or replace new information. So this document management platform is a huge win for us, and it also gives us great insights. And um, yeah, it, it, 
it's um, currently, you know, it's available on on the App Store, both on on iPhone and on um, the place uh, on uh, Google's Play Store. Um, and um, we we are giving it to family farmers in Southern Africa to to try and to test. And um, we've got some really wonderful use cases uh, that we know we're on the right path. Sure, well, it sounds amazing. You know, you don't kind of think of technology and farming, especially for small farmers. They don't use a lot of tech, you know, coming together. So what kind of success stories can you tell us about? Yeah, so um, like I said, our use cases, you know, the reason why we told farmers, you know, please download the app, talk to it. We want to see how you interact with it. And that's also how we learned, you know, that, you can't just use generic information. You have to see how farmers interact. You know, in the beginning, farmers didn't ask questions. They made statements to it. And um, I think the whole, so the, the big thing is people need to realize it's a conversation. It's not a search engine. Um, you must, and, and it's some of the app functionality that we're also building in is suggested questions so that farmers can just go ahead with a conversation and, you know, analyze and go deeper. Um, so some of the use cases are, you know, some of our rural uh, farmers, uh, I'm thinking especially about a goat project that we had in or that we have in the Eastern Cape where there was a lot of mortalities uh, with regards to uh, this specific herd of goats and they couldn't figure out what was the issue. You know, the problem with us as an organization is we're very small. I mean, we just don't have the capacity to send an agricultural extension officer or a veterinarian a thousand eight hundred kilometers to go and see what's wrong, especially if you have like us six or seven of these development projects across South Africa. So we ask them, you know, just download the app and see if you have some success with the advice that it provides. And one of the recommendations was that uh, the water uh, was dirty and that there was some kind of um, influence that in or, or contamination of the water that's leading to these deaths. And they replaced the the Jaja tank that was there and put in a water filtering system and, and uh, it, it immediately stopped. The other one was uh, with a, a, a project that we've got here in Rustenburg, vegetable farmers, you know, they, they got access to new um, fertilizers, to new seeds. And it was products that they haven't used before, but it was sponsored. And um, again, these farmers didn't have someone on the ground with them to assist them, to give them advice and to say, Yes, you can use this, but only a couple of days after you've sprayed this and you can't use these two concurrently and this is the dosage. And we said, well, give us all of those product manuals of each of those products. We loaded it in the document management system and they just had easy access, could talk to the product labels. Because just imagine this. Imagine you're a farmer anywhere in the world and you have access to the largest agricultural library that exists. And I'm not just talking about product information. We sit with massive universities, research institutions, private companies who've paid for research. And, you know, usually that research just comes out in English or Afrikaans or, or in whatever country it is based. But large language models makes it possible for us to, in our case that we tested, to, to, to talk to all of this research, this product information in 83 different languages, because that is just at the core, at the essence of large language models. So another recent um, one that we saw was a farmer did uh, a soil analysis for his macadamia orchard in George, and he sent he sent the the, the soil analysis away. And you know, after two weeks, he, he got kind of impatient, and he just put it into our AI and said, "Look, this is my soil analysis. Tell me what is lacking." And uh, it gave him a recommendation. He worked on it, and a week after, he, when he got the soil analysis back, it was basically similar. And it's just because it was trained on real good educational data to be able to answer that. So, you know, it's use cases like these that, that give us real hope, um, and especially with regards to agricultural extension. So, so what do farmers say to you after they've used that? Are they really keen on continuing, you know, this journey with AI? You know, I, I, I think, um, you know, these... There's some disbelief as well because you know although we marketed it as a as a agricultural extension product in South Africa, our farmers are very reliant on on what what the legislation and the regulations say. So you know from the start, yes, we've got this um, AI agricultural neural network that is built over the AI and and this thirteen thousand subdivisions that makes it a real agricultural expert. But I also plugged in a, a large legal component. 
you know, with every piece of agricultural legislation and especially um, criminal law, et cetera. So I think, you know, farmers just need to trust what the technology can do because you can see the conversation going and you can see them engaging with it. Um, but I think, you know, there's still a bit of disbelief about what is on the other side. Um, and actually, because it's a, you know, uh, because it's a, an AI, because it's, it's driven by the information that it was fed and not what it scoured from the internet, it makes it actually more plausible than any um, other person that you would get, you know, normal person that you would get information from or a Google search. Because um, we really try to segment uh, these different sectors. So yeah, I think um, user user reliability. You know, um, they they must feel comfortable with it. But I also think also think we've got a huge role to play in in user education, in prompting how they speak to the AI, how they need to understand how to talk and how to prompt an AI to get the the the, the answers that they need. So, uh, Francia, what's the uptake been like in terms of n numbers, you know, because um, you've been going, what was it, since February last year? Yes. Yeah, we, we recently relaunched. Um, like I said, we've been going through a lot of iterations. Um, we only launched the latest platform and, and made it really accessible to anyone, any family farmer. And um, we've, we've just ticked past about 4,500 consistent users. The reason why we haven't um, uh, really launched in the past was just because of stickiness. It's important that when someone goes on the app, they come back and they come back again and use it. So um, we've got a lot of functionality that we need to add to the system, but we are at a place now where we believe that the information that is within AI Farmer, the South African platform, is robust enough to answer any question. We also encourage farmers to send us, you know, other documents uh, that they uh, that they think would be valuable to them, and it goes through a whole um, document verification uh, process because um, the ethics of of AI is very very important to us. You know, we believe that by the end of this year, maybe next year, every person will be able to spin up an AI instance on their phone or on their laptop, but. The value comes from the information. And if the information is not verified, it's not ethical. And if you cannot trace that information to a to a credible source, then it doesn't mean it. So credibility is is extremely important to us. So that's why we've taken a bit, uh, a while to 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 roll out AI Farmer to where it is. And we've got a lot of wonderful functions that we will be adding, like um, a market market prices for all the different types of uh, agricultural subsectors in South Africa. We've already got the weather function live. Um, we're adding voice activation. You will be able to get uh, photo and video analysis uh, early next year. So I, I think, you know, um, we've, we've waited, but we need to drive stickiness uh, to ensure that farmers trust and feel safe with a product. You talked about that is it is available in so many languages. Is it available in the eleven languages of South Africa? Yes, yes. I must tell you, um, in the languages that we've tested, I did a demonstration in Malawi recently, and the lady came up on stage and asked it in Chichewa, gave it the perfect answer. Uh, while we were demoing in Germany, we had a, uh, a question in Hebrew. Although, although I cannot tell you whether it was correct, the person that asked said, "You know, it, it looks it looks correct to him." So. I just think, you know, again, it comes back to trust and, and in order to trust it, you need to understand what large language models can do. I think um, another thing that we're trying to to convey to, to uh, the farmers is that we've really spent a lot of time trying to eliminate stuff like hallucinations within the large language model, trying to stop uh, drifting of the data. Um, you know, it's something that we check for every morning. It's a built-in uh, check question and answer that the AI goes through every morning because um, we we cannot afford to have problems like that in our system. Is there anything else you would like to tell us about this um, system and platform? Um, yeah, I think I think it's just important from an agricultural extension perspective why this technology is so transformative is that we've got about seven impediments that is currently hampering um, agricultural extension services. The first one is um, a limited access uh, to knowledge. You know, um, many smallholder farmers don't have access to the latest information. And usually there's also 
uh, structural impediments, you know, like uh, needing to travel far to go to a university or to an expert. And um, AI really has uh, the, the ability to, to, to give farmers access in real time. And then the second one is, of course, research constraints. You know, I do not know, um, you know, most of these smallholder farmers don't have access or know where to go to, to, to get the relevant information. Um, but now with AI, you've got an institution that's that's putting its name behind um, the the information that they populate uh, within the um, in the AI. So it's not all necessary to to go and attend a training session on a specific topic where you know the instance was trained on that. And you know, I I, I just don't know about farmers who are able to farm during the day and go and do research at night. To, mm-hmm. to answer the questions that they have or to go through different research documents and try and address a specific issue that they are trying to answer. And again, this is what makes AI so powerful. You pose your problem to the library of information and it goes through that library and it answers your question. It doesn't uh, put something in the abstract for you to go and try and decipher you as a farmer who is not an expert in that in in in, in that uh, uh, topic, so that that's what makes it so extremely powerful, you know. And then, like I said previously, institutional capacity. Um, most of our governments and most around the world just don't have the the capacity to to fund and to keep agricultural extension officers um, uh, to to get them to where they need to be in the deep rural areas and get there consistently and follow that farmer and to build a relationship with it, you know, and then also generic information. I think, you know, uh, farmers are, there's, there's too few experts in the field that get to farmers. So, you know, you have guys trading on maybe something and they're not uh, topic specific to the farmers who need it. Um, you know, and also from a from a, a government perspective, um, monitoring uh, and and the supervision of these extension offices are, are always the issue. And then the last one, of course, is is accessibility issues. Some farmers get preference over other farmers. You know, it will always be the bigger farmers that gain more because um, uh, that's who the extension agents or the companies would think are are most relevant. So. Um, yeah, these are just some of the stuff that we are trying to address in the agricultural extension space and that we believe that AI has a real use case for. It's, it's, it's nice to have this technology, but if you can't apply it to a specific problem, um, it's not going to be sustainable.